Greg to take the limelight away from the two star speakers, the groom and the best men. <laughs> On behalf of my wife, Anne and I, and also Pam and Pete, I wish to convey my thanks to all family and friends, particularly those who have travelled some distance to be here on Kirsty and Steve's special day. You know, if you want to make time fly, have a daughter. It seems not so long ago, I was holding a newborn eight pound, two ounce baby in my arms with fair hair. It was one of my proudest moments until, of course, today. One only has to look at Kirsty to see the radiance flowing from her. And that in turn is make me what makes me and, and me so happy for her. As for my new son-in-law, Steve, Kirsty has found <coughs> the perfect partner. And I'm delighted he has become part of our family. There are many things I admire about Steve. He is level-headed, good sense of humour, and it's clear he appreciates the finer things in life. Well, he married my daughter, didn't he? And when it comes to talking about Kirsty's qualities, where do I start? She's intelligent, hardworking, and always willing to help others. She's her father's daughter, all right? <laughs> Having been in the wedded state for much of my life, I'm in a position to offer our newlyweds some timely advice. Give and take. That's the secret of a happy marriage. And I have found give and take, and that's the key words. The wife gives the orders, and Steve, that's right, you take them. <laughs> I was told by from that taxi driver from Manchester gave the ideal way to make a marriage last. Steve, take notice. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Finally, I would like ask would like ask you all to join me in this toast. Here's to the past for all you've learned. Here's to the present for all that you share. Here's to the future for all your plans together. And here's to love, laughter and happy ever after. I give you the toast to the bride and groom, Mr and Mrs Daniels, Kirsty and Steve. Kirsty's hand in marriage was one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> it was only made better by the fact that when I got in the car and went to drive off, Mick just leant out the, wind, out the door and just gave me a little <laughs> oh. My heart was jumping. I was dripping sweat. Are you okay, Steve? What's the stairs in your house? <laughs> uh, I'd also like to offer massive thanks to my mum and dad. Um, they've been great to me. They've welcomed PSC into the home, poured over the of us both. It's been interesting times over the past few months, but we've all got through it. And uh, they've just supported me for the whole of my life, <laughs> completely. Before I well up, I'll carry on. Um, although she isn't here, I'd just like to thank Chris Much. Those of you who know her, made us an excellent cake. <laughs> I'd like to thank my ushers who ushed supremely <laughs> this afternoon. Um, I'd like everyone to raise a toast to the bridesmaids who looked absolutely beautiful today. Ali! Bridesmaids! Bridesmaids! Now, this kind of thing wouldn't be complete. 
complete without a few words about casting. <laughs> and I can't say much really because a few words really do sum her up. She's beautiful, sexy, gorgeous, and the perfect wife for me. And doesn't she? Oh, doesn't she look gorgeous, everyone? <laughs> I'm just going to hand you off to my dad for just a couple of words. Yeah, right. <laughs> couple of words, my bad side. Thank you. We're going to call it now. The reason I'm standing up here really is because of Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel's not going to get away So we've got a bet going that you will definitely get up and say something. <laughs> I said, yeah, I will, Kev, so back me in this one because of my yeah. um, I've stood up to do the absent friends. Okay, really. And that's. <laughs> Top of the list is Pam's mum. It's tough time. But anyway, <coughs> she should have been here today. She's not long passed away. That's that's the sad side of the way. I'll put that to bed because we're here for happy occasions. Um, I was going to mention the issues actually, because this morning I got up and finished up with something like the Von Trapp family. Okay. I ironed eight shirts <laughs> for these guys. They all turned up, oh Pete, yeah, oh Pete, yeah. And I had eight suits, we haven't been able to get in a wardrobe for about two weeks because of this. Um, and I thought, I stood up here and I thought, well, we've got the best men here. <coughs> and what best men really need today, of all days, is a speech. And they're about to get up and give you a speech. Hopefully. 18 minutes, Peter. Because <laughs> sometimes best men need speeches. <laughs> and as it happens, I've got both of them. And I did warn them before they came here today. You've got to keep an eye on your speech. Because there's boys out there that'll pinch you. Okay. I can't really do that. They say... A problem shared is a problem halved. Literally. I think. Literally. I'm not too sure about that because it's about to go two ways. <laughs> so Dave, there's yours. That's my dad's man. I can't really keep it going. So I'm going to hand you over to the two best men. And my time is 16 minutes 40 seconds. <laughs> okay, lads, have a go.